Good to see you. Come on. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Wow, that's hard to follow that. <laughs> I'm not going to rap for you, that's for sure. I've done it before. But I, I used to spit on the ground. I, I, I can preach and I start spinning, but now, uh, with all the travels I do, you're probably not smart. <laughs> let's lift, lift your hands in the glory and just welcome the Holy Spirit. I don't know if there's a keyboard player that can just play for a few minutes in the back. I don't know. Is there a keyboard player in the room? Somewhere. All right. They'll come. Lord, we just thank you for your presence, for your glory in this place. Fill this place again, again, from glory to glory to glory. Lord, this place has had, a, a, I think, a whole week of revival. But Lord, this last day here, just take it to another level, Lord. From glory to glory to glory. Thank you for, I can feel the presence and the glory here, even from earlier this morning. Overflow, Lord. Take us higher, Lord. Open our eyes to see in the Spirit. Open our ears to hear what you have for us, Lord. The mysteries of your glory. Oh, show us, Father God. Fill us right now. Just ask him to fill you right now. Fill us right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your blood, Jesus, that opens up heaven to us, Lord, and cleanses us and protects us. Thank you, Father God, that we, we can have, be right with you. We can have a seat in heaven with you. Whoa, thank you, Lord. Fill this place right now. Lord, I invite the angels in this place, the archangels, the heavenly hosts that are assigned over this region to take the rightful place, oh God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I see them all lining up right now along the coast. Thank you, Lord. Whoo, along the waterway. Ha, hallelujah. I see, I see huge armies of angelic hosts lined up like literally just shoulder to shoulder to shoulder all along the waterways. So, so something with the waterways that God's trying to protect on the edges of the state going into the water. So we thank you, Lord, for that army of angels just being assigned to the water and the land, land angels. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, when we talk about territorial spirits, we always think of demonic spirits, and they are, but there's also territorial angels because the devil is only a copy of what, the heavenly grid. So there's angels just over the physical land holding things back like volcanoes, hur hurricanes, earthquakes, all that kind of stuff as well. So we thank you for the territorial angels to keep this place, Father, calmed in the spirit, that the earth would be calm until your full purposes are established, Father. Hallelujah. Man, I can you feel that heavy, like, whoa. <sighs> How many want to work with the angels? Archangels, territorial angels. Man, I can feel it here strong. When I was in San Diego at Jeremy Nelson's, the first time I was there, and I said, uh, and I saw these angels there, and I said, there's... I see these two angels and they're holding up the plates of California, especially of Southern California. So that won't be that big earthquake that they say is imminent because it's been a hundred years. And then the Lord been showing me because of the revival there that that's what's holding it back. And so I really believe uh, your church plate like this is holding back things that the earth could be allowed to do. Natural things. The Bible mentions the earthquakes and the floods and the, but, but like because there's a revival, it's like holding back. You know, like kind of like if there'd be 10 righteous, Lord, would you not allow this city to be destroyed? And it's like that here. here is more than 10 here, and not just righteous, but like on fire, right? Literally. So, so your faith, your fire is literally saving a lot of people, even physically, from destruction. Did you know that? And so there's like a counterbalance over Seattle when I see Seattle in the spirit. You know, we always hear the news, right? Oh, the pr protest and left wing and all that. But what the news doesn't share is places. There's, and I've been preaching probably more in seattle last year than most places i was here at least two or three times just last year like every year I keep, in different churches like there's, there's little there's many little pockets of of hunger and third and then there's the russians there's two different there's a ukrainian and a russian church i go to there's different ones and they're hungry for god here so there's just like god weighs things in the balance and though, so there's a lot of wickedness even more than most states but then there's a lot of hungry for the percentage of people there's some hungry fiery and it doesn't have to be everybody it doesn't have to be most churches they're just a remnant. It's not going to be most churches are just kind of probably dead, right? But then there's the fiery ones, and those are the ones holding the plates up in the spirit. So, so you, you are greatly honored in heaven, amen, and respected just for holding the fort. So keep, keep going. Th now you have to have revival all the time. I mean, pastor was so believed he needs revival, he named his ministry that. So that's kind of hard. You have to live up to it after, you know. You know, some churches who had great revivals, the d different denominations like the Wesleyan and the. Imagine if your church was called the biggest revival ever church. 
and then and then that and then that revival faded but that's still your name like you have to keep that and it became a denomination and give and it goes all and like 20 years later they're completely dead with an organ the greatest revival ever and, and every service is like a funeral service for a guy named jesus that died and we feel we so feel sorry for him so we do a service every sunday in honor and respect for this great man he died and he so bad it's too bad they didn't know that you get the memo that he rose from the dead it's still so most services in the world are funeral services for a nice guy named jesus there's no laughter you don't laugh at a funeral you don't make jokes right you, you dress up really nice your best suit because it's a funeral you know and, and respect for that dead guy you try to dress up the food's usually really good so most churches are very predictable it's like a funeral you know have you ever been to a funeral where the actual pastor said i don't want to lie to you he's in hell he was terrible i mean <laughs> i've never been to one and i know some that i know went to hell but yet i never went to one where the pastor the the, the priest it, it's a, it, it's you know what the whole thing's a fraud because even the pastor or the priest will say and he was he's in a better place now is he <laughs> he was a good man and a, no he was dude you know he wasn't you knew he beat his wife and went with three others and, and robbed the liquor store and, and, and was in prison for 20 years. What? Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. Going, I'm moving off. But my, my point is, this is a good church. <laughs> We're not doing a funeral service in memory of a nice guy named Jesus. He did some good things. And every week, we just come together to a you know, memorial service. <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting drunk in here. Man, I can feel there's that, that ooh around here. Feel that? <sighs> Thank you, Lord. So bring in those archangels, Lord. Mm, bring in father the reinforcements father thank you lord wow thank you jesus and i just saw something too i saw um that some of the ukrainians that are in ukraine are going to be coming here as refugees and then they have a form of god you know they, they understand but a lot of them aren't born again and so and there's a russian ukrainians here and russians gotta lead them to the lord so there's mm, that's good thank you lord so you get to be a part of it in some way isn't that awesome man glory 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 mm, hallelujah thank you jesus and there's going to be an exodus of the jewish people soon out of america back to israel that which you've heard for many many years because ukraine if, how many were wondering what's going on with ukraine why is this happening so one of the reasons is God's trying to bring in the Jewish people out of the nations that are... So when the Russia, Soviet Union collapsed, one million Jews moved to Israel, right, in the 80s, 90s. But they didn't leave Ukraine because it would... Ukraine, so that now God's shaking them out of Ukraine. There's like 200,000 of them. Thousands and tens of thousands are applying now for Aliyah. Some have already come back to Israel. So he said, I'll take them out from the land of the north and all the nations at the end time and I'll bring them back. And the Bible mentions the hunters and the fishers. So many fishers have told them, guys, go back to Israel. And I know some that did, but most, no, we're good. We grew up in Ukraine. It's easier here. And now they're running back. And I've always said it, whenever economic collapse hits or persecution, that's the only way they'd come. But, but so that which you see is a chain reaction that's starting. is It's going to happen in all the nations that have high Jewish populations. Can you think of another Gentile nation that has a really high Jewish population? Which one? Yeah. Right here. So, so when you see the shakings... The economic stuff, the political stuff, the persecutions. No, God has a plan behind the scenes. He's got to get his people back. Usually when something's about to happen to a country, they take their ambassadors out first. So we're going into some stuff here. So, what's, so, so when you see this stuff coming in America, it, it, it's not against you. It, it's shaking the Babylonian system. Let my people come back. Because it says, in the land, that's when they'll find me. So most Jewish people won't get saved until they get back. So we're going to Israel next week. And we're doing three evangelistic outreaches in the same week. I've never done three. Most people don't, don't even do any. They just go on a tour and then visit, eat some good hummus and come back. Float in the Dead Sea, you know. And then we do, and we do those. We do those tours. We, we, done, we did it before COVID. But this one's three that God organized all in the same time. And, and one of them is going to be mostly Ukrainian Jew, unsaved Jews at the coming. We have a, a huge hall we're renting. We're, we're busing in like tons of buses. And they're coming in for a tour. And then they're going to get free food. And they're going to do a seminar. Seminar by me. And then miracles are going to happen. They're going to get saved. And then there's another one. And there's two other cities, two open air ones. With different ministries organizing. And we're doing that one. So it, it's, it's, I'm like, whoa, what are you doing, Lord? He goes, it's harvest time. I'm bringing my people. So very soon there's going to be a big shaking. I believe this year. 
because we're on the seven year cycle Shemitah every seven years since the temple was destroyed there's a shaking uh, but this, this is the big one this year uh, oh man we're ending to the Jubilee time too on the, on the Hebrew calendar so all debts are cancelled you know so the great reset you know the great reset there's the demonic one Charles Schwab and then there's God's great reset and Jubilee all debts were cancelled all slaves had to return in modern day you can say your unsafe family members are coming back from the sin of slavery there's a reset of the financial system through a shaking and a crash. The enemy thinks he's doing it for his purposes, but God has a purpose behind the purpose. And so, so when that happens, a lot of, now, now you understand why a lot of Jewish people might go, you know what? And then they're going to blame the Jews on everything like they always do. Or pick one bad Jewish guy like George Soros and say they're all, you know, they, they always do that. That's, just, that's anti-Semitic. So, and when this happens, they're going to be, some of them are going to be running and, and they're going to need to hide on their way to Israel. And I just saw also parts of Washington State, some of the Jews will need places to go as they're trying to get out and some of you are going to house them as they're making their way out. It's getting quiet in here. Some of you are like, like, say, what? I was okay with the Ukrainians, but now you're going too far, David. <laughs> you're like, I don't want a bunch of New Yorkers here. No, I didn't say New York. They're not all Larry Davids, okay? You know? <laughs> it's getting quiet, man. So we're not, I don't know why, just when I got here, this end time stuff started hitting me of prophetic. But it kind of like, isn't it exciting though? So the shaking's coming, he's shaking. I'll take them out and the Jews will leave the nations. And then he's going to shake those nations even more. And then revival and harvest is going to come. <laughs> Until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, then all Israel shall be saved. So there's two revivals of the Jewish people. There's, the, of course, the ultimate one when they see him whom they pierce. The whole nation gets saved. But there's got to be a, a, a precursor revival before that. Because it says, when are you coming back? When are you going to do all these things and restore the kingdom? And he says, when you, he's talking to the Jewish people. When you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When there's a remnant of Jewish people in Israel calling him back, that helps trigger the worldwide harvest and then eventually the return of the Lord. So I found a secret in Romans 11. Oh, I, I caught on the secret. Paul says this is a mystery. How many want the mysteries? He goes, this is a mystery. How many believe P Paul was pretty successful? Of the 12 apostles, wouldn't you say he's probably one of the most successful? He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Most of the doctrine that we have came from him. Apostle, evangelistic, prophetic. He's prophesying to kings and leaders. And how many think? He's a pretty good example, right? He, he gives a key. How many want the key? He goes, there's a mystery. He goes, I magnify my ministry. How many want your ministry magnified, your effectiveness, your influence? By making my own people, the Jewish people, jealous and or saving some of them. And he found a secret. He wanted to go to the Jew because he was a Pharisee. And God's like, no, you know them too well. So your main call is the Gentiles. Gentiles? This guy don't know nothing about the word. Yeah, you go to a bunch of barbarians, go to the Greeks and worship God, Zeus and all this stuff. He's like, what? That's not my thing. He goes, exactly. He sends you where you don't feel comfortable so that God has to move. But he goes, I have a secret to win these Gentiles. If I go to the Jew first, it triggers, a th it's like a thousandfold harvest on the Gentile harvest. And I don't know how I caught on to this. I was fasted and prayed way back 30 years ago. I got to Paris, France. I go, man, this is hard. No one's getting saved. How do you get people saved? They're atheists. They don't care about God. They're very self-righteous and they, they love their culture and their food. And they, you know, I don't need Jesus. I don't need God. So I fast and pray for three days. And I said, Lord, show me, how do I win France and Europe? This is hard, you know. And he goes, oh, touch Israel, my people. If you touch the Jewish people, I'll give you the Gentiles. I said, but where? And then there was a tour coming up that our Bible school from Christ of the Nations was going to Israel. And it was evangelism mixed with a touring. And he goes, if you go to that and you win Jewish people, I'll give you France. And then that scripture during the fast, and it says this is a mystery. He goes, I don't want you to be arrogant towards the roots. He's telling the Gentile Christians like us, right? I don't want you to be proud like, oh, we got it now, towards the Jews who don't have it. Because they gave it to you. The root supports you. If it wasn't for Paul saying, hey, Gentiles can be saved too, you wouldn't even have it. So you owe it back to them to pray for them to come back in. Now that you're more numerous than them in salvation. That was the revelation he got. So I'm like, okay, whatever, I'll do it. And then, and then I said, but Lord, I need, I need $3,000 for this trip. The next day my mom calls, your car just sold for $3,000 in the States. And I go, wow. And then the next day we were in Israel. It was like the last day to come up with the money. And I led 13 people to the Lord. 10 Jewish Israelis and 3 Arab Israelis. I got visited in the upper room by the power of the Holy Spirit, shaken by the core by God. I get back and suddenly revivals start breaking out in France. I'm preaching everywhere. And then a six month revival broke out in 98. And then we started doing civic centers. And, and what happened was I hit something in the spirit realm. I hit the core of the apple of God's eye was the Jewish people. 
Because if the end, if you're in heaven, the end time planet, right, is all based around Israel. When, whenever the fig tree is ripe, you know the time is near. That, that's the, the, the barometer. So anything you do to speed up a Jew getting saved, therefore speeds up the end time harvest. It's the dial. You can get Saudi Arabia saved, the last one holdouts. North Korea, let's say, everyone gets saved there. But he still can't come back until there's a remnant in Israel that's saved, that calls him back. So by going to Israel, I'm actually touching the dial of the end time worldwide harvest and speeding it up. And then suddenly I come back and the Pakistan's open up for me and the other. So every time I do something towards Israel's revival, the nations open up to me supernatural. People tell me, David, how did you get such supernatural favor? How did you pull off Awake in 2020 get Kanye? The only thing I can say is, I've been, we've been doing this for years. We keep go- going towards Israel's salvation and it opens up the ability in supernatural doors to win the other the gentile nations so if jesus is in heaven he's in heaven waiting for for you know a certain remnant to call him back and every jew i get saved he's that much closer but then the worldwide harvest is that much closer too then when i get a jew saved it speeds up the end time harvest there's a i might 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 be going to saudi arabia within the next 12 months there's some different crazy doors that are opening because i'm touching the apple of god's eye and some u.s stuff isn't this exciting how many are like i want to get on board I want to do some, so and then 2020, so every year we would go to Israel, I would usually go in there at least twice a year, so we're doing a tour, outreach, and ministering different places, and then we couldn't do anything in 2020, right, I said, oh man, we can't go, and the Lord said, and then I had three prophets in a row, even Michael made it, you know Michael made it, and see, he, that's where we go when we're not traveling, he, he calls me out, there's like a thousand people, David, the Lord says, I'm just there in church, like what, you're going to start a humanitarian organization, I'm like, in my mind, I was like, no, I'm not. Like, that's great. That's not what I do. Like, what? And I'm like, what is that? And then I call another prophet. And then he goes, oh, that. And in my mind, I think, was that, could that be Israel? Because two years before, someone in Israel advised me, you should start a humanitarian organization. You can reach a lot more people. And you'll be accepted. And, they, and you, it's different. And then this guy goes, the second prophet calls me. Oh, all I'm getting is that's for Israel. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to do it. So we, we, I don't know how we pulled it off. We needed seven Israeli board members. And we pulled it off in a few weeks. Got it approved. And we have one. It's called The Return in Hebrew. The Lord gave us the name. So since, since 20, uh, end of 2020 up to now, when they were under the fourth lockdown, nobody could leave their house. Our guys with their badges of humanity can go anywhere. And, we, and we're sending thousands every month. They're feeding the poor. And then they go, of course, they go to the congregation. And they say, hey, you want to come to the congregation? So we've been ministering them with food, humanitarian, medical supplies. And get this. The, the congregation we work with is Ukrainian. They're helping me organize the, the outreach. And guess what? Most so we're doing three the third one the biggest one is mostly all ukrainians and some of them will have just come from ukraine and most of them have family still in ukraine that are on their way to israel so we're literally reaching the ones coming and that's our biggest outreach where you have to rent the building is this crazy how god set this up god is so smart and then it looks like how are you how are you coming in doing a thing with the ukrainian jews right the perfect timing because you just got in god's time man but it's it's, it's a holy ghost setup and then after the, it's over, there's follow-up. We're going to keep helping the ones that are poor, the immigrants, they have no money, they don't speak the language. And, and man, ministering with food, hey, let's get diapers for your kid. Let's, and, and they'll tell me, hey, guys, these kids are going to school now, they have no backpacks. All right, let's get them backpacks. Let's, you know, and we're just, isn't that awesome? So the Bible says you, you have to bless them physically because they give us spiritual help. Remember, Paul said, let's help them. Let's help them. So you take them an offering for the ones, I'm not doing an offering, but I'm just telling you, just pray, so number one, pray for Israel's salvation number two pray for souls to be saved amen pray for their physical needs to be met pray for the nation of israel whether or not you agree they don't do everything right at all the government doesn't but but you pray because that's that's the end time it's getting quiet in here and so that's if so if you want to know what's going on in the world events there's going to be a lot of earth-shaking events that we haven't seen anything yet this year this year always see through the light eyes of heaven first of all from heaven's perspective and then Israel. Keep your eye on Israel. Don't forget Israel, because that's it's the barometer. And it's funny, Zelensky is Jewish, and he's asking Israel to possibly negotiate the peace deal. This is and then the world prophetic events. You know, war Gog, Magog, Russia's supposed to eventually evade Israel. That's all getting ready. They're already next door in Syria. <laughs> Iran's just about ready to finalize the nuclear deal. If they get the, if they get that approved, which, which they probably will because of Biden's in power, then Israel will have to in a very short time knock out the nuclear reactor. When that happens, Russia is allied with Israel. Remember it says in the Bible, I will cause you Russia, I'll put a hook in your jaw, I'm going to have to, I'll force you to come down. Like God's entrapping Russia to come down. 
Russia is going to have to because of their alliance with Iran, they're going to have to come down. So this is very imminent, all this stuff, guys. But guess what? Israel wins that war. It says in the Bible, this is during, you're going to see this. That's not the tribulation yet. That's the beginning of sorrow, shaking. You're going to see a lot of these things. Isn't it exciting? You'll probably see the beginning of the construction of the third temple, at least the construction of it. I thought we weren't going to be here. You probably will be here. When you see these things, then say, oh, you, don't, you won't be here. Don't worry. It says, when you see the abomination even, the cause that doesn't mean you'll be here for the wrath the last three and a half, but it does say, when you see, who is he talking to? Oh, it's probably talking to the backslidden people that, that backslid, and that's why they're stuck here. Well, no, he's talking to, I mean, it says it there. Oh, it's getting quiet. I'm messing with your mind, man. The Bible should be read where a kid can just read it and understand it. You need a theologian to confuse you of what it doesn't mean. When you first read the Bible, you're like, wow, that's going to happen. And someone said, no, it's just symbolic, theoretical, not really. It already happened 2,000 years ago. The temple got destroyed. And, uh, no. You, know, you need someone to confuse you to unbelieve what was normally you believed. <laughs> so we're living in the end times. So the Bible says, redeem the time. Redeem your time to make the most of your life so you can be impactful. How many, how many are getting sober this morning? You're like, whoa. But you know, most people don't talk about this stuff, in, especially in our circles, in our revival circles. Have you noticed people don't talk about this? And then the ones who do talk about it don't move in revival, don't move in miracles or healing, don't move in joy, and they're always doom and gloom. Just, they're just end time prophet thing, you know. And it's always like, they're going to kill us all next week, you know, like. So then there's the extreme of that. So then whenever we hear anything sounds like that, we just shut off. But there's something in the middle. There's, God does speak about things to come. We're supposed to know. But because we like, la, we don't want to hear it because we just want revival. La, 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 la. And then things happen. Oh, why did Russia invade Ukraine? What's going on? We should have known. We're prophetic, right? But because theologically, we, we cut off from anything that sounds negative. Then we miss that whole segment of what God's doing. And we're not ready. Financial crash. No, I am blessed. I'm the head and not the tail. Yeah, and you could be even more blessed if you know what's coming. But if you don't want to hear anything, la 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 la, <laughs> then you lose everything. See, how many? I want to. And there's there's pieces of revelation in different segments of the body of Christ that got put in, and that we need, we can take the good and spit out the bad. Our movement here, right, has some great and has some not so great too. How many know our movement has some bad characters in it too? <laughs> in the last twenty years, <laughs> things that you're like, oh man, why did that guy do that? Oh, you're making us all look bad here, dude. Same thing. But it doesn't mean God's not moving. It doesn't mean there's not revival. It doesn't mean healings aren't for today. It doesn't mean prophecy is prophecy, even if someone misprophesied. See, it's getting quiet up in here. It's Sunday morning, right? So I'm going to deal with the issues a little bit. We'll see if we do miracles. We had that all weekend. You had this morning. But let's like, I'm excited that I was, God chose you to be alive at these, this time. In world history. It's like a relay race and he gave you the last baton. You're the last lap, dude. Don't mess it up. Oh, okay. Don't just chill out, man. So this makes you pray more, fast more, seek God more, want to go all out. And, and it helps you if you're, if you're tempted by sin, because sin is rampant in the church and in the world. Just realize you don't have much time. Like, oh my God, sober up. Like, like this is a war. Get your, if, you, if you realize you're in a war, you get more serious. This is not chill out time. This is intense time. But it's fun, though. Oh, I'm having a blast. And it's intense. And people are texting me as I'm preaching. Why are they doing that? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes my dad, my dad calls right in the middle of my sermons all the time. He did that when I was in, a, remember, I don't know if you were there. He, he's like, oh, I need you to call me right now. Uh, kind of hard. I'm literally on the stage preaching. And I can't talk to two people at the same time. My dad has the knack of calling at the worst, worst possible time while I'm being interrogated in customs. You know, I have a question for you. Can you call me right now? No, I can't. Oh, are you, are you dissing me? No, dad. I'm literally being interrogated by the... <laughs> Can it please wait? For, and it's never as important as he makes it sound. He's 83. He doesn't know time. He's in the glory, right? <laughs> and he doesn't have a job. So he's like, when you're retired, you have a job. There's no time. It's just, oh, I didn't know it was Sunday. Yeah, why aren't you in church? What are you doing? You call me at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. You should be doing something else. <laughs> Some of you can relate. That's why you're laughing. You or your family members. Oh man, so we're in this end time thing. So are you excited about this? Yes. And so the, the big players in the end times, you know, it's Russia's in the Bible, big time. I mean, it's all over the Bible. Um, Russia's in the Bible. I don't, America's not clearly in the Bible. There's kind of hints of the coastlands and the, so that probably means we're not the world power at the end. We're still here, but we're not the dominant world power. 
right? And we want it. We want it. We want America to be great again. We want all that. But I'm just saying, if just to look at the Bible, you have to realistically face what's going to be. If you know who the players are, then you know what, what to... We're going to have a, part, a big part in it. The church in America will have a huge part. But for the end time events to happen, and America become, can't... If America is blocking Russia, blocking China, blocking... It, at the end, these things have to happen at some point. But even the shakings can be used to bring the greatest revival America had. So I believe that the last great revival in America, we've had the goodness of God leads people to repentance. We've had the goodness in America for 200 years. But now the shakings of God, some remnants in America need to wake up, especially the church. After 9-11 happened, the churches were filled for three months and they already went back to normal. COVID, we thought COVID would do it. Let's open now, guys. You can come back to church. Eh, just watch it on Zoom. What? Get, get back in church. Oh, I'm good. See what I'm saying? So I don't even think, even the COVID, I don't think was enough pain that the church felt to cry out to God as a whole for awakening. Should have been. We had Pac, we had Sean Foyt going out, we got Mara Miller going, but I'm saying as a whole. So I think there's another shaking coming. But if you know that in advance, here's the great thing. When shakings happen, that's actually when you can have the greatest advancement of the gospel. In the financial realm, that's actually where more money is made in crashes than any other time in history. It's the bumper crops. If you know what's about to crash and what's about to go up, more millionaires are made after the 29 crash than any other time. They sh- the ones who knew shorted the market, insiders, right? Well, same in the spirit realm, prophetic, you have, you have inside information. He shows you things. What, before He showed Daniel what's going to happen. He showed Joseph. He showed Moses in Egypt. I mean, they knew. The apostles. All right, sell your home now. No, don't sell it now. Okay, buy food and grain for Jerusalem because there's going to be a famine that's coming next year. They, they knew. They didn't go, oh, that's negative prophetic. I don't agree with that. But that's what we do in our movement sometimes. Anything positive is from God. Anything that sounds scary or negative, not from God. Well, have you read the Bible? <laughs> so that, that we have to clean up our American americanized system here because we're, we're we just want it a certain way it's like you're sitting on a train track that's not a train because it's not my theology it had not been taught that way and i'm not on a train track and i'm not going to get hit that's a symbolic train coming towards me i'm not on a train track it's not a problem i have my starbucks in my hand i'm fine the sun's out this is And I'm going to prophesy that's not a train. I decree that is a vision. That's just a vision that I'm looking at. Move out of the way. Hallelujah. I'm going to quote all the promises over my life. God, I'm blessed. I'm above blessed. I'm the head, not the tail. That's great, but get out of the train track. (laughs) Getting quiet in here. So there's got to be someone here that has that theology that I'm, I don't know why I'm nailing that. So somebody here has that and God's using me to help you. Because <laughs> I don't know why I'm going that way. So just give up now. And some of you are like, well, one saved, always saved. Well, just in case you're wrong, it's a big mistake. <laughs> Think, like if you thought, okay, pre-trip, post-trip, pan-trip, not a problem. You're saved any way you're going to get saved. But if you were wrong on one saved, always saved, and you could go back into sin... And it actually wasn't true, and it actually meant what it meant that your name could be blotted out of the book of life. Whoops, <laughs> that's a big mistake. Better they err on the side of just in case it means what I think it, what it says. I'm going to stay holy before God and right, and go out for God. Because that's a big one to mess up on if you're wrong. Even it, even if it's not what what I'm telling you, it's better to err on the side of playing it safe. <laughs> Get really quiet in here. The Bible says in the, end, in the shakings, even the rich, your money, your wealth won't help you, but only righteousness before God. When the shakings and the judgments of the earth begin to happen. The judgments for the earth, for the wicked, right? It's not for you unless you're wicked. <laughs> There's some wicked Christians out there, trust me. So don't be the wicked, be the righteous. This tree is going to be violently shaken. Either you're going to be shaken by it, or you're going to be under it with your harvesting baskets. It's ready. Like we're going to Israel with our harvesting baskets. We're like, it's a setup. It's a divine setup. As Kevin Zadai says, it's rigged in your favor if you line up. But if you're not doing what he tells you, you're still in a lot of things he told you not to do, or even financial stuff that he told you, you're having a sense. I think I need to pull out of this. But my, my broker told me, listen, hear the Holy Spirit too. And then everything crashes, and you're like, oh my God, I lost my retirement, I lost all my money, my house, I don't know what to do. Because he, he was giving you hints 
but you were just stuck in this and yet money was important to you because you need to do the gospel you were hoping to be free enough to go on the mission trips and serve the church and so so the money is really important because where your treasure is your heart is so the devil is going to use money to control people in the antichrist system is all about money in the end in the end how you treat your money is going to determine your soul even judas went after money more than jesus he lost his soul getting quiet in here so make the shifts that he tells you and you'll not only be surviving what's coming you'll thrive you're going to be crazy blessed almost in 2020 a lot of ministries got hit really hard we could have you know we had conferences set up and and then uh, then all of a sudden we had to, we couldn't do it the governor said hey you, we you know we don't have we didn't have our own building so no hotel would rent to us so I'm like you should have just done it anyway like the, and just be like rotten hair brown and go to jail for jesus it's not that i didn't have a building <laughs> Now I do. So the Lord told me, quickly create a, a studio, a TV studio. And normally, you know, they could be up to $100,000. We did ours under 10000 But it, if you watch it, it looks like a $100,000 studio. This guy set up for us. And then we just shifted our whole conference, our com- into the studio. We, we had Sid Roth, Chuck Peter, We had him um, pre-record it. We, we were live, and then we'd go to their videos. And we reached so many people April 2020, May 2020, June. We just kept doing one after the other, and it, it went viral. It exploded. We, had, we reached way more millions of people. Way more finances came in for the ministry, for Israel, for the poor. for, And we, we did better in 2020 than the times where we worked our butt off setting up stage and sound equipment and, and, and going to conferences and driving to hotels and flying the speakers in and all that work. I mean, God bless our socks after in that time. Why? Because we heard and we shifted. Then he said, okay, now go back out. If we just stayed like that, we would have gone back down again because everybody was doing it. So you have to hear the Lord on every season. But you, we get used to ruts, like, oh, I'm going to do this now for the next five years. No, no, it wasn't for five years. But now you have that extra media thing for your ministry that's growing with your physical. But don't just go back to just online. The church, we, the, the church, we bought a campus, $3.5 million, uh, October last year. Supernatural favor. God says, buy it now. I'm like, why would I buy it when, when things are about to crash? He goes, because you need a place to meet. And then Michael Maiden told me, yeah, you pr- there's probably going to be stuff coming down the pike. Again, they're going to try to shut things down, and you'll have your own building. So I see God has a wisdom, and it's opposite of the world. The church we bought, it was, it's a big campus, four and a half acres, classrooms, basketball courts, and, you know, meeting center. That church, I asked the pastor, why are you selling it? He said, because no one's coming to church anymore. They're watching it online. See, they didn't, the, the church didn't hear it's time to come back, and then they don't give. So I can't pay it. So what, is, what was a loss for him was a blessing to us. I said, well, don't worry, pastor. All, and they built it from scratch. I said, this is an awesome building. It's, it's in good hands. Because he said, yeah, I'm glad you have it because you guys are doing big stuff for Jesus. Then all the work we put in, then it's some secular company wanted to buy it. They were going to do whatever with it. And I'm glad. I'm, he's, and he's still renting it from us on Sunday mornings. Now, we're his landlord. He still gets to be in the church. He's got the money back. And we're still doing it. So see how it all works out. So he still gets to be useful, but he's not having the burden. Isn't that awesome? And we're friends. You know, he, he said, hey, we're having a funeral. Is it okay? I said, dude, don't worry. I won't charge you. Just do it. Like, we, we work together, you know. Isn't that awesome? I'm, I'm usually begging people, please, can we stay in one more hour? The revi- God's moving tonight. Can we go to 11? Hotels kick us out at 10. Now we can go all night, whatever we want to do. Amen. So I'm going to read some scriptures here. How many are already getting, like, revelation for the end times? Uh, I want you to be sober. And when you know this, the, the greatest harvest of souls are going to happen in these next seven years. Between now and 2029, 20, 2030, this is it. This is the moment, our highest moment. You can right now still win the loss. You can right now still, things just, we're in between the op- reopening after COVID and another war. We're, we're in this fine line space right now. We went to France, Paris, France, January. Why? Freezing cold. That's not when you go. And the, she's like, well, you can come later. I go, no, we're going to go. We'll go now. Because we don't know when that door is going to close again. So do now what you got to do. You don't go to Israel in March. It's colder there, way colder. Can't even go swimming, you know? But we're not going there for vacation. We're going there for... <laughs> Springs are the time when kings... Springtime is the times when kings go to war. And, and Chuck Pierce had said that last year. He said, he said way before this whole thing with Russia, he said there's going to be some kind of conflict with China. He didn't even mention Russia. So we haven't even seen the China one yet. The big one's China. And so China now is looking at Taiwan going, okay, I see how they did Afghanistan. They just ran. I see with, they threatened Putin, but they did nothing but some sanctions. They're not putting, okay. So, the, so things are about to happen. So just position yourself. But if you know in advance, that's the, that's the, the blessing of it. You'll be so blessed. You're going to see more soul saved, more blessing financially, more breakthrough, if you know what's coming and how to position. 
the sons of Issachar had the gift prophetically to know what season they were in prophetically and what they needed to do as Israel. Most Christians are telling me, what's going on? I don't understand. What? Oh my God, Russia and this and that. And they're saying, just be ready. Two months before COVID hit, they had a simulation. I said last night, they had a simulation. What if a worldwide pandemic hit and then two months later it happened? So, but meaning they already knew. <laughs> and they actually had the vaccine. How do you think they got the vaccine so fast? They already had it. And then the next thing is, because um, it takes years. And the next thing is, now they had a simulation a few months ago. What if all the world economic systems shut down and got hacked? So they went and did a simulation together. What if hypothetically, so they had Federal Reserve, European Union, Japanese, I mean, all the major worldwide entities together, and they did war, like simulations. Okay, they all, all these banks, American Express, Cards, uh, Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, Bank of America. Oh my God, they're all hacked. They're all offline. So they were like, yeah, we have to shut all the banks down, close them down for a few weeks. Let people pull out maybe $100 a day or $100 a week max, just in case hypothetically something happened. This is two, three months ago, which means they're planning it as an excuse for what they did. And now we have the perfect excuse, war. And now they're warning. I already saw this a few months ago. Now they're saying on the news now, oh, we're at a great danger of possible cyber attacks from our banking industry. They're already setting up the narrative. I'm just like, most, no one talks about this. I'm like, the, you know, the unsafe people talk about this and the, and the Christians don't even know what's going on. But I want my people to know what's going on. Sometimes the people of the world are wiser than the people of light, the Bible says. How many want to have a little more wisdom? So, so then this is happening now. Like this is, we're right in the making. But, but the greatest harvest of souls is now. So if you're a soul winner, this is the greatest time. Greatest time. St soul winning stock is up. Because when people are hurting and they're scared and they're fear, Jesus. They're sick, Jesus. They lost all their money, Jesus. Family problems, Jesus. Depression, Jesus. No food, Jesus. So we're going to, I'm saying, so the greatest opportunity for the church is about to happen. When things are going well, it's, you know, it's going good. There, some get saved, but not like the masses. Why do you think when you, we go to Africa or Pakistan, Charlie and I go, we tell you these stories. Oh, 100,000 got saved in one night. Because it's hard over there. People are being dying. There's sickness. There's no money. It, it kind of sucks. <laughs> living there right i've been there so why do you think in africa everyone comes there's nothing going on but jesus here we got too many things going on well the latest movie came out i love to go to church but this real new movie i gotta watch the game man i got tickets you know like we got all this stuff going but there man it's jesus is coming with miracles oh i'm coming witch doctor atheist they don't care religious spirit christian they're gonna come at least to check it out so that's what's coming to america they come to america have a dream <laughs> they come to america the background of that song is actually not very good but the song sounds cool <laughs> so i think it was that, i think that was a song from the guy wrote it he was anti-american hippies 60s he was mocking them the america and, and every time fourth of july they play that they come to america no the guy's mocking america on the song i didn't even know that i was so patriotic when i heard that song <laughs> yeah and it was, he was like, I think he was talking against the Vietnam War and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, but you, you get the point. So how many want this? How many got prophecies over your life? How many are waiting for them to come to pass? Okay, that's probably why they haven't happened yet. <laughs> right? That's what I thought. I had a bunch of prophecies. I wrote them down in a notebook and put them on my desk. All right, God will just do it when he'll do it. And Ruth Heffern told me, you're going to start doing stadiums and civic centers. And when I was in France, like Benny Hinn does and this and that. I'm like, great. One day. Amen. And then she dies a year and a half later. And the Lord says, when are you going to start doing it? Oh, I'm waiting for you to make it come to pass. He goes, when she prophesied it, it was already done. What? It was done? No, no one invited me to nothing. No, it was waiting for you to walk into it. Ephesians 2.10. God has predestined everything in your life waiting. And when I got that revelation, I went, wait a second everything i've been waiting for 10 20 years oh my god i got that those prophecies back out i i start going to the heavy glory like i mentioned last night worship praise waiting on him and i and then i would start declaring those prophecies that he gave me already then he's saying now take an action step towards each one next day i go okay stadium events you told me i call up the guy who invited benny hinn and surlo and arnacondia the, the big faith church hey um 
what's the number of the civic center where you guys rent out? Give me the number, make an appointment. I just start walking into it. And they go, oh, you want to rent this thing out? What is this for? An insurance company, a religious event, car show? Religious event. And they go, oh, yeah, we did the Benny Hinn one with that church. Right? This is a businessman renting out the big, in Paris. And, I, and he goes, who's this for? Is it for Benny Hinn again? I go, no, no. Well, who, who's the one speaking in this one? It was me. I felt so embarrassed. Peter Herzog. I mean, I feel so awkward organizing it for myself. Like, it felt like it was not me, right? I was like, I had another friend. And he goes, oh, wait, what's the name again? And I said it real shyly, David Herzog. Wait, who's that? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, I heard about you. No, you did not hear about me in France. It's less than 1% Christian, and you're a secular businessman? He goes, yes. About a year and a half ago, when I got that prophecy, you had a revival that was going on for six months. How would you know that? He goes, because I'm a Baptist pastor. This is my sec- this is my secular job. Half my church went to your revival, and I was jealous of that church that had it, so I didn't go. And the Lord's been telling me recently, he's a spiritual Baptist, the Lord's been telling me recently that, that I missed it, and I had repented, and I asked God to give me a second chance. And now you're moving the revival to the Civic Center. I go, exactly. He goes, and then Ruth Heffern prophesied, when you do it, you'll do it like Catherine Coleman every three months, which usually you organize once every two years to do a big event, right? These big guys come. And I go, he goes, I go, oh my gosh, that's what I, that's the word Ruth gave me every three months. He goes, do it every three months if you want. Well, how much is it going to cost me? He goes, well, I won't give you the numbers I was going to give you. Now that I know who you are and what this is, don't worry about that. Just do, I, just, I want you to do it. I'll, I'm going to work with the mayor's office to lower it as much as possible. Just do it every three months. Still was a lot of money, but not compared to the astronomical, what it would have been. And we did it. And we, and we did it, and another, and another, and it just launched us, and, and we start having big stuff start happening. So I walked into a prophecy that I was waiting to come to pass. So how does that work? So here's the cross, right? So in the Old Testament, they prophesied, oh, the cross is coming. Jesus, you know, this, this, God's going to die, raise from the dead, there's going to be a sacrifice for our sins, right? By his stripes, we were healed. The prophets saw that thousands of years before Jesus, Right? But in the spirit realm, there's no time. So when he's in the spirit, it's not future anymore. It's present. We are healed. And some versions say we were healed. In fact, they went beyond it and go, oh, we were healed back there. So when, when you, how many are saved and healed? When you got saved, you're here, 2022, whenever you got saved. We look back to the cross and you go, because of the cross, I received Jesus. Because of the stripes he paid, I'm healed. How many believe if he didn't die on the cross, he didn't? pay the price with the stripes you couldn't be saved or healed how many believe that how many believe you couldn't raise the dead if he didn't raise from the dead okay i'm gonna mess with your theology then how do they raise the dead in the old testament before he died how did they get healed looking at the pole before he died how did abraham's faith not works faith began as righteousness before he paid the price for that you just said you can't have that unless but he, blah 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 right so when they're looking at the at the cross when he's looking at the cross was it past, present, or future? I'm hearing all kind of answers. I say. <laughs> no, it wasn't all. Wait, from where he's standing, it looks like future. But when he gets in the glory and the spirit, it's, 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 it is now. How do I know that? Because it says the Old Testament things were shadows of things to come. So we don't kill an animal now that was a shadow of his sacrifice. Does that make sense? So if you're in the shadow of something to come, see that shadow there? That means it's not, it's just, it's not to come, it's there. What's creating the shadow? The, the thing that you're looking at. So the prophecy over your life, your personal destiny, your prophecies, get this, it's not in the future. It's there creating a shadow. Meaning if there's a shadow of it, it's there now. My gosh, I could have it now? If you start walking up to it, you'll realize it was there all along. Because he claimed the cross had to... Now, now, when did Jesus really die then? Well, here's the cross. Here's, you know, Isaiah, the prophets. Here's Genesis 1.1. And it says, before the foundations of the earth. That mind-boggling. Wait, before Genesis? He, we can't understand that in our brain because heaven is different. It's circular. We're linear. So that's why when he went to the cross, he goes, for the joy set before him. He already went to the future or the past, which however you want to look at it, he already endured the cross. I've been there, done that. Have you ever done something for the first time? It was like deja vu as if you've always done it. When I did my first stadium event, it felt like I always did it. It's weird. I go, honey, I like, I've done this before, but I haven't. 
I feel like I've been to this place, but I haven't. You've now entered the glory zone. Jeremiah 1.5, before you were in your mama's womb, he knew you. Before, not before you were born, before you were on the earth at all in any form, he knew you as a spirit. Jeremiah, I knew you, and I called you as a prophet to the nation. So he already had his destiny figured out, the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Then he sent him on the earth. But then the baby couldn't remember. If you ask the baby, what is your destiny? He could tell you completely, bleh, 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 bleh. but he can't speak English. And then after he got older, he forgot. And most of you forgot. Most people's number one prayer after they get saved is, what's my calling? What's my destiny? That's the, the big inner desire. More than, who do I marry? That's a big one. But even more, you get married, you're still not satisfied. You get the house, you're not satisfied. You're doing some ministry, you're not satisfied unless you're doing the thing you're called to do, that you're born to do. And when you find that, then you're like, that's it. That's what I'm supposed to do. How many want to find that? So that thing, God has pre-planned, predestined at Ephesians 2.10, waiting for you to walk into it. Now the glory comes, when you get in the glory and you, and you start seeing things, you start seeing your destiny. And then you speak it into existence. I declare, I will do that thing which you said, Lord. Boom, it starts happening. The Hebrews 11, uh, the, the worlds were framed by the spoken word of God. Glory, you get in the glory, and then you speak, and then it creates. Glory plus spoken word equals creative miracles. Glory plus spoken word equals destiny manifested. Body parts that are missing even, how do they get created? Glory, presence, then speaking. So invisible glory combined with invisible sound wave equals solid physical matter. Everything created, this is being held up by atoms, protons, neutrons, is at the core. And inside that, even smaller, is the sound wave. When you're speaking to cancer, you're speaking at the core to the sound wave that got messed up. Shift back in Jesus' name. Moses, speak to the rock and tell it to turn back to water. Why, how? The core, inside the atom and proton of that rock, there's a sound wave that God put in that creation. And how did that rock get created? Glory and sound. The spirit was hovering over the waters and then in that cloud of hovering he spoke boom, rocks were created if the same original ingredients that create the rock is present it, the same original ingredients can recreate the rock to another form if the original building blocks of creation are present you get a revelation so that's how you see metal plates turn back to bone which you saw recently again boom, it just turns back so you get, again the revelation that's doing it in the glory realm that's a different dimension how many want this stuff now, seeing something multiply, that's even easier. Something, everything multiplies after its own kind anyway. So you pray over the, the offering. And we, the first stadium event we did in Paris, it, we didn't have enough money still. We, I, they counted the money. It was only a fourth what we needed. I said, what do we do? Cute little baby. And then the <laughs> distraction. <laughs> Cute. And then the Lord said, oh, command the money to multiply. What? Is that legal? So I, I commanded it to multiply, and I told the I don't count the money. I then, okay, you guys go count it, and after you count it, count it like three, four times. Pray over it each time before you count it. I didn't. I went back to my hotel the next day. They told me amazing. After I prayed, it doubled. They had counted it double. Then they prayed again, counted it triple, quadruple. I was like, what? And that's the only time we had to have that happen. Every other one, there was above what we needed. It was just like, so even the finances in the supernatural, but when you understand these elements and how they operate, revelation knowledge gives you a lot more authority in the spirit realm. Does that make sense? And, and I was like, oh, that's how, the, that's how those things, because Jesus had authority over the wind and the waves. Not, he didn't ask God, oh, Lord, please. no, he spoke to it. When you talk to a cancer, it can hear you. So you're not going, Lord, please heal grandma. She's been good. She goes to church. She pays her tithes. That's works. You're trying to name all the work she did that she earned a healing. She's been a good woman. Uh, that's great, but that doesn't heal you. Cancer. I know you can hear me because of the revelation David taught last night. Die, sucker. From the root. Metal turned to bone. You see what I'm saying? And the object can heal you. Ezekiel 37, if you need another scripture. Speak to these bones. What? The people that died? No, the bones of the people. Hey, hip, hip bone, I got a prophetic word for your life. Oh? Come together right now over me. Start doing the robot, you know. How do the bone know what bone to connect to? Cellular memory? Your muscles have cellular memory of the most you bench press when you're in high school. You haven't done it in 10 years. You come back and all of a sudden you're able to do it in two weeks. 
the bones knew what bone. Imagine if it did. If it just did whatever, a grandma's head, a big man's torso, and a baby's legs. Ah, it would be crazy. No, it knew which bone it was connected to. It had memory. <laughs> bone. Imagine it. How did the bones knew? Bones come together. It knew. Jesus had a conversation with a tree. This encouraged a lot of the tree huggers here. He didn't hug the tree, but he but he had a, and he spoke. To, it was more like a monologue. Probably. Actually, it was more of like a monologue with the tree. So he goes, oh, fig tree? He, to him, it was like a vending machine. I like some figs, please. And the apostles are listening to this. Oh, you're going to play the silent treatment now? I said, I would like some figs. Oh, it's not the season for figs? Yeah, right. If your life depended on it, you could give me figs right now. You just don't want to. Oh, you're going to play that way, huh? Die, sucker. Let's go, boys. And they're like, man, Jesus needs a vacation. He's getting mad at trees now. I think he's, the, the crowds are getting to him. We, we need to go to a quiet place. I think he's getting mad at trees, right? He's talking to trees. The next day, just in case, they went back to check it out. The thing was completely dead. Man, that's power. <laughs> so cancer, die. See what I'm saying? Body parts recreated. How many want to see stuff like that happen? Yeah, man, I do too bald heads growing hair we've seen all this stuff so yeah we're not doing a question and answer right now we'll talk at the she's like i have a question like in our in our training school we'll have question and answer but because it's a sunday morning of a, of a church in the middle of a revival like question and answer will be here all day <laughs> but my but you get if you have questions read my book the book that explains this stuff is glory invasion it explains the quantum levels of the glory how many love this stuff because when, when you have revelation then you're like oh wait a second so when someone stole my chain here in Paris, France, I knew that there's no distance in my chain. God knew where my chain was. And I asked, Lord, have the angels fetch this guy and grab him. And then we're running through Paris with the, in a police car chase, chasing this guy who stole my necklace. And, and all of a sudden, they're like, sorry, we lost him. He's, he could be hiding anywhere too late. And we go, no, in Jesus' name. And then he pops up. His accomplice pops up. Grab him, handcuff him. The next thing you know, the other guy's walking down the street. This is blocks away from where they stole it. And then they grab him. They got my chain back. And the police are shocked. They go, we've never seen this. We, if normally, once they're gone, they're gone. How did you? So we start preaching Jesus to the police officers and to the guy who stole it. Sorry, dude. You didn't stand a chance, man. We, we prayed to Jesus. He's a Muslim. We have to start ministering to him. You know? As he's being taken away. You know? I didn't feel too bad for him because in Paris, they let him go the next day. The cops, it's like New York. The cops tell me, man, it's so frustrating. We work hard to get these guys. And sometimes I see the same guy 10 times in a month. Dude, I caught you again. Honey, I got to go to jail. I'll see you for breakfast. So the penalty is not high. So I wasn't feeling it. But it, I, I, they took me to the jail. It's really smelly, gross, disgusting. I don't want to go to jail in France. Yeah, the food isn't great there. But, 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 but you have, you have um, like a Wi-Fi worldwide roaming in the spirit realm. You can, you can know that. You know, I lost my watch one time. Someone gave me a really nice watch. We had a resurrection of the worship leader dropped dead. In near Sedona, we did a conference, and he raised, rose from the dead during the thing. And the Lord told me, something significant is going to happen at Pentecost at your conference. It was pretty significant. First night, he's leading worship. It wasn't Steve. It was another guy leading worship. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not going to die in my conference. But if you were going to die somewhere, why not do it in the middle of the glory? So he, he could have been just driving his car, go off the road. He was leading worship, dropped dead, heart attack. And, and Brian Welsh was there. He was supposed to give his testimony that night. He goes, I'm not giving my testimony right now. Uh-uh. He was freaked out. What the heck? And, and the pair makes her on stage trying to get him. And we're like, what papa? And I go, sing a song again. I had the, 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 the worship team keep singing, worshiping. God is so good. Why are we trying to raise a guy from the dead? It was crazy. He died four times and he lived through it. Never had a, he, he should have, like, it was like a widow maker type thing. He completely survived it. Supernatural. The cardiologist said this is a miracle. Then a guy gave me this watch. It was like an old Rolex, like a cheaper Rolex but it was a sign. Like I said, when someone gives you this watch, it'll be a sign of a level of power that I've given. I go, wow, this is great. So this, the watch was the sign of that moment. Well, then I go to Shanghai, China, and I lose the watch. I left it in the hotel there. I get to Hong Kong, two-day layover, and then home. Oh, oh, no. I call the hotel. They can't find it anywhere. Not any of my bags. It's complete. And I know I left it right on the sink. Oh, man. It wasn't about the watch, even though it was a nice old watch. It was the, what it represented to me. Man, and I get back home to Arizona, and I'm in Sedona at the time, and the Lord says, you've seen this before, come, command it to come back. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's in China, Lord. He goes, do you believe what you teach? Well, yeah, you know, I've seen it before. Do it again. But I don't feel like doing that. Sometimes I don't feel like doing any of this spiritual stuff. I'm exhausted. I've been traveling for 30 hours. I just want to go to bed. He goes, he goes just command it to come back. The Lord's like bugging me. I'm like, okay. I did it with an attitude. Okay, all right. And I, I start worshiping a little bit. 
I'm so tired, man. All right, I worship you. And then the glory starts coming. In Jesus' name, I command my watch that's in China in a hotel to show up somewhere where I can find it tonight in Sedona. Amen. I'm going to bed, Lord. I'm done. I go to bed. I sleep. I mean, honestly, I didn't have, but I had revelation, but I didn't have a lot of excitement about it. And I'm in my bed. I'm sleeping, trying to sleep. And then I wake up in the middle of the night. The Lord says, now check your backpack. It's by your bed. I go, no, come on. He goes, check it. I open the zipper. I'm, I'm half asleep. It just pulls right out. There's no way. I'm a head checked everything. And we've seen this over and over and over again. Floating axe head. Axe head falls. They don't float, right? The wood might float, not the axe head. So even the laws of physics and gravity shift in the glory, in levels of glory. Commands it to come back up. Is it, you know what I'm saying? How many want to live the superni- supernatural life naturally and the natural life supernaturally? So it's not just in meetings. It's not just in meetings. Like Paris, we demonstrate the power of the glory of God. But then we had to live it in between the two meetings on our day off when someone stole my necklace. You see what I'm saying? So how many want to raise the dead? Well, I got good news and bad news. The good news could be bad news too. The good news is you're going to have a lot of opportunities very soon to raise a lot of dead people. Yay! Wait, what? If you complain you didn't find any dead people to raise, you're going to get a lot of opportunities very soon. That's great though, isn't it? Even mass resurrection is going to be a new form of God's power. Just like healing used to be one-on-one and then there was mass healings, then deliverance used to be one-on-one, come out, no, yes, no. <laughs> Clean up people, where are you? And then there's, there was mass deliverances and crusades. And now you hear about every now and then a resurrection here or there on Sid Roth or something. So the next level is going to be mass resurrection. More than, at least more than one at a time at the same time resurrecting Ezekiel 37. Speak to the bones. Tell them to come together. And then there's the next level. Now look at it. So he looks. As he's looking flesh. As I look flesh appeared. Looking for the thing God tells you speeds it up even faster. So you know when you speak in the glory... A subatomic particle of the thing you just said gets created. Did you know in the actual physical solid matter of the thing you're saying in the glory gets created at that moment? Faith is the substance or subatomic particle of the thing you're hoping and wishing for. You know when you pray, when you feel faith and you're glory, and you go like, honey, I feel it starting to happen. I can feel it in the spirit. Boom, it just started. Then when you start to look for it, it speeds up. They, they made tests and studies and scientific analysis. When you think about something at a high enough intensity, it, uh, it can start creating the thing you're thinking about. As a man thinks, so is he? I'll do above what you ask or think. So at one time I was in Kansas and I was teaching this and I, and I had a word and all and someone here's white hair is turning black and the front of his hair turned white, uh, black and the back was still white. I was a 70 year old man. I said, come up. So he comes up and was like, wow, that's great. It's still half the hair turned, you know. Now turn around. I said, I want all 700 of you to stare at the back of his white head and believe, and I want you to see in the spirit that the rest of it's turning black now. But I don't want you, anyone here to be like, oh, let me see you, this works. I want you in the spirit to see, and the scripture is, he who began a good work is faithful to finish it. So I, in Kansas City, they're all staring at his head within like five, or, five to seven minutes max. Everyone starts screaming, oh my God, and the camera's on, and the thing started turning black right in front of everybody. So I, I, I didn't even know if it was going to work, but I was, I was, I was, I experimented on my own meeting, which is kind of dangerous. You should do that in private in a lab, and then you bring it. And I was like, well, well let's see if, it, you know, it's, the speaking part worked, right? But what about if I start looking? And that's why I tell people in my meetings, now check your pants, now run, now do something. Do it, because it speeds it up. Oh, let me check. Oh, my God, it's healed. Usually it didn't get healed just because I spoke it. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it got healed when you start checking it. Some of you get healed like, oh, the moment you said that, David, I, boy, it popped. Others of you, as you started testing it, it got healed because you started looking. See, but most of you are just used to well if, if they call me out my name and, and say where I live and then I'll believe no that's ridiculous that's once in a while that's very rare well if he does it, if Charlie does a healing line and lay hands that, that's great but you're not dependent on that so how many want to be in the quantum levels of glory from glory to glory to glory how many want to go through walls Jesus went through the walls and he got trans just came beat me up Scotty How did that happen? Spirits and angels go through walls. Sound waves, which is the smallest thing, right? Goes through walls. Your cell phone sound. Water particles, when there's a flood, finds a way to... So they're small enough on a microscopic level for it to go through. When you're in the spirit realm and you feel like you're floating, you feel lighter when you're soaking in your room? You put worship music like, ooh. What happens is the molecular structure of your physical body starts to expand. And your spirit man takes over. 
And when it's in an expanded enough state, it can go through the, the walls, through the metal. Because the sound waves start to... If I took a picture, uh, uh, just showed you a picture of four dots, you're like, okay, I can see those dots. But I blow it up to 200%, you can't see them, but they're there in an ethereal realm. When we worship today, like I said last night, the miracles are floating in the atmosphere. The body parts last night were here. But then how did I extract it from the invisible expanded realm to the compact realm? Then a word of knowledge, I see it, I decree it, and I get it from the glory realm into the, and then you act on it, and then it starts manifesting. So I'm actually explaining to you how these miracles are happening in the glory realm. How many like to, like, it's, you like to know the behind the scenes? Otherwise, oh, I can't wait for that speaker to come back because those cool things happen. How about you understand how you can do it? Because we're supposed to equip you to do what we do. We're not supposed to just preach and hope to get invited everywhere and do the stuff. My goal, that's why we're doing the training school in September, three-month training school, to explain to you, and I do it here, here, and there, but how, you need to do this stuff. If everyone starts doing it, we can win the lost. If every single day, okay, if Sean Foyt and Mara Merlo every day do a revival, it still wouldn't be even touch 1% of America. And they're going hard. You know, Sean's going hard. So it's going to take way more than one or two people. Argentina revival hit so hard because everyone was evangelizing. That was the key. There were the Anacondias and the Cloud of Friesens, but they were still just a little bit. It was just to get the, the people going. And then the 60s revival. Remember the Jesus movement? Catherine Coleman was there. All these people were doing it. But it wasn't them. It was the masses were just playing their guitar and witnessing to everybody. And the masses were winning the masses. Actually, that's how more came in. But then there was points of reference where Billy Graham would come or this guy would come. That was just a, kind of like a booster shot in between. Does that make sense? So, so here and there, there's some stadium events in America or the Send is going to do a thing in October or whatever, whatever they're doing, May 21. But, but that's still just, and that's mostly for the church to mobilize them to go out be sent right but but how about in between see that's the key is daily living in this stuff how many not daily living in this stuff daily doing what god says i'm gonna man it's already one i'm gonna pray here in a minute <laughs> i know i know i said lord what do i do this morning he goes go right into the revelation knowledge mornings are good for revelation knowledge how many were here at 9 a.m how many have miracles healing okay so most of you were already here so i don't need to reinvent the wheel <laughs> I want to get healed again of the same thing. So th- this, this newest book, Limitless Glory, has a lot of this stuff in there. This one has the revelation on the speckled lambs. So remember the unspeckled and speckled lambs? Was it the speckled lambs that said the unspeckled or vice versa? You remember? Laban, seven years. His lambs look at the other lambs. Whatever they were, let's, I don't, can't remember. I think they were unspeckled looking at speckled or vice versa. They're looking at the other lambs and all of a sudden they become what they're looking at. So when you're, you know, get this, when you're looking, when we're looking at the back of the guy's head in Kansas, in our mind, we're thinking that's turning black. We're seeing it as black. Guess what? The thing you're looking at in the spirit is looking back at you. And when you're thinking black, it's like a mirror and everything you're looking at mirrors what you're thinking in the spirit. So, I'm th- so I, here's what I do. I get in the glory. I worship. I, I do my decrees. It's called decree, right? Declaration conference. Then I take a second hour and I start to just visualize. I w- maybe I shouldn't say visualize. It sounds new age. I would never visualize, but I imagine those things that God just showed me. Okay, but don't visualize, brother. I will never. But I have a mental picture of the things that God just showed me. Jesus did not levitate. Levitation is demonic, but he arose. Maybe get a dictionary. It'd be real interesting. Oh, I would never levitation is evil. But he arose off the earth. <laughs> anyway, anything the devil can do, by the way, is an inferior copy of the original. Once you get that, it's not about the act, it's the source. What's the source? Okay. Moses' rod, Pharaoh's rod. Similar, but his is more, more powerful. So I sit there and I start. So he told me, like, let's say Australia, Indonesia, you know, these nations, this, that, TV. So I, I, I declare all that in the glory. Then I take another hour and literally I sit there as if I'm doing it. How many of you have a dream and the dream it feels real? In the dream you feel the excitement of it, the, the adrenaline. He said, do that while you're awake, while vision, in your vision realm, on purpose. Okay, Lord, wow. And as I'm doing that, I got, oh man, wow. Oh, miracles, resurrection. Wow. Deliverances, all oh, the money just came in. For, woo, and I'm doing this realm. Guess what? Within that hour, I'm getting phone calls, open doors, blessing, finances. Because when I'm seeing it, guess, get this, guys. This is the most important part of this one. When I'm seeing those things that God told me, those things are looking back at me, seeing me see it. And it doesn't know what dimension, past, present, future. It goes, oh, he's already there. It starts manifesting. Even 
ahead of my time. So Jesus said, I can't do a miracle, Mary. It's not my time. If I do this miracle, then I'm, they're going to know I'm the son of God and my ministry starts and I'm, I'm exposed. And he goes, okay, whatever he says, just do it. Mom, I just said no. And he wasn't doing false humility. Oh, I don't want to show off. No, mom. Okay. No, it's, I am the son of God. No, it is not my time, mother. Yeah, he'll do it. Just, just do what he tells you. How many got moms like that? And then all of a sudden, Jesus goes, oh, she's already there. You see, the future becomes present. Oh, mom's already there. If you can see it, even though it's future, it becomes present. And then, and then he goes, all right, give me the water pots, and, and does his first miracle. And he did his first miracle, and they believed, even his disciples, that he was the son of God. Thanks a lot, mom. I'm going to die in three years now. You started the countdown. What? I didn't know. Yeah, I could have gone to 50. 50 is Jubilee. That's a prophetic number. Because you did, mom, you jumped the time clock. I'm going to die in three years. I only got three years now. Thanks a lot, mom. I won't make it to your 30th anniversary now. See what you did? <laughs> That's my version of it. But I have to use it in that way to understand. Syrophoenician woman comes, please heal my... No, oh, are you Jewish? No. Sorry, I can't do it. Why? Because I've only come for the house of Israel on this trip. You've got to wait till I die, raise from the dead, and then tell a guy named Saul, who's a Pharisee that hates Christians, wait till he gets saved, maybe 20, 30 years from now, and then wait till he gets a revelation that even the non-Jews can be saved and healed, then your daughter can be healed. That's basically what he's saying. It can't do it in this dispensation. But she's in the future and goes, but even the dogs get the crumbs. Meaning, I know you're a good God. Eventually, you're going to touch the Gentiles too. Because they, cons- they, say- they would call them dogs unsa- because they were, it-, it was like because they were not clean, right? They eat bad food. They, they you know, they, they, they say they did for- not fornication. They didn't have the laws of God. They didn't know what was what. So they called them dogs. The Jews did. And she goes, he didn't call them dogs. But she goes, well, the Jews call us dogs. But even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. She, he, she's already in the future. See, there's no time when you're in that room. And she goes, oh, you're already there. And all of a sudden, he, she's healed. So your destiny is there, waiting for you to come to pass. You get in the glory. You speak it as if now. You, you visualize it as if it's happening. And you take a face step towards it. And all of a sudden, boom, it's happening faster. That's how, when St. Saint, Saint has prophesied, you're getting a new beautiful building. In four months, we owned it. Part of it was I understood some of these elements. So the next week, we went and physically walked on the property. Every place of feed yourself, trust, trust shall be given to you. And we call the angels of territories. Hey, territorial angels, you heard the word. You need, you need some help here. Talk to the owners on my behalf. Then, and then we got in the glory. We got in the, every day I would see myself in the building, doing our meetings. And, and, and then the money should start coming. Lord, you said it was going to be easy. A prophet told me, it's not going to be hard. It's going to come really easily, the finances. You won't have to beg or stress. Or, and it came. So what I'm saying is, how many want this stuff? How many got some other stuff? I still got some stuff I haven't done yet, and I need to. And I just need to make time to go into that realm to keep doing this stuff. Sometimes I'm busy, too busy traveling to go in the prophetic stuff just to do the stuff. So I need to do less stuff so I can pull back so I can do more stuff. <laughs> I need to do some behind the scenes stuff so I can do the bigger stuff. But I'm doing the medium stuff, which hindering me from my big stuff sometimes. I'm not saying you're, this meeting here is a medium stuff. This is because I'm giving you stuff so you can do stuff so you can do stuff. I'm speaking in code. Like Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus spoke in parables. I'm speaking to you about stuff. Stop doing some stuff so you can pull back, do spiritual stuff, then to eventually do the big stuff. You got me? I just moved here from Asia. I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Or from Russia. Someone's tra- someone will translate for you. <laughs> okay, we're going to pray in just a minute here. Because some of you are getting hungry. I can feel it. Sometimes I end my, my own meeting shorter because I'm hungry. I've done that many times. Many times. I'm sure Steve has ended worship a little shorter just to go get a hamburger or something. The glory is so strong. The angels are here. But I'm hungry, man. It is finished. <laughs> One time I wanted to go so bad. This is really bad. And I was teaching him how to go to third heaven because we did it in Bethel. We actually took people to heaven. They saw each other. Saw, uh, you know, One guy goes, I saw your dog and I saw your dad who died. And she starts crying because her dad and her dog died at the same time. All this stuff. So we, we actually took people to heaven third heaven Bethel we learned it I learned it in Israel at Bethel not Bethel Reading Bethel Bethel Israel Bethel the original Bethel no, that's a good one but that's the original and he said this is the gate of heaven it's actually one of the portals 
Jerusalem's one of them. There's four major ones in Israel. So we went there, lay down the rock, did the, like the Bible said, and boom, it was there, man. There's a rock. Yeah, there's a rock there. So I took it. We all laid our head on it, and we, we got taken. We were doing this in 2003. No tour group. Sarl, the biggest tour company, said no, one's, no one goes there. We were the first ones to go there by revelation from reading Genesis. And this is when the intifada was happening. The wall wasn't fully up. And they go, dude, it's too dangerous. You've got to pass near Ramallah. It's a settlement there. Zionist guys with, the, with the machine guns. I go, great. He goes, I'm trying to discourage you, sir. I go, no, we want to go. I insist. Okay, it'll cost you more money. You have to rent a bulletproof bus to go there. No problem. It's certain you have to rent a soldier with a machine gun because that's how dangerous it is. Oh, I said, you're getting me excited. He's like, sir, I don't want, the tour guide doesn't want to go. I said, we're going. So we did it. We, and, they drive, and we don't know where we're going in Bethel. It's just settlements. There's, no, there's, no thing, there's nothing to visit there. And the, the driver goes, I don't know where your thing is, dude. Just park here at this water tower. And that's where it was. And we walk down this hill. And also there's a sign with a ladder. The, the archaeologists believe that was the spot. But they didn't know. And then we laid down a rock. And now everyone goes, a lot of people go there now since then. But no one goes. In the first few years, nobody was ever there but us. This is the gate of heaven. And you get in the heavenly realm. And you sit in your heavenly seat. And then you rule and reign from there. How many you get in Revelation? So sum it up, get in the glory, worship, pr- praise, then worship, then wait on him. Then you see the things that God shows you or the things he already told you. You decree a thing, it shall be established. Okay. Then I take a second hour, many times I put soaking music, and I start to see by faith all those things happening as if it's happening. It sees me seeing it, and it starts manifesting way faster into my now. Then I get out of that realm, and I take faith steps so left brain right brain your artistic spiritual side then there's the logical how do we actually do this i call the thing up i go visit the property i start writing the chapter of the book that i think i'm going to write like you just start see you start then you start step now the frame's created hebrews 11 3 the worlds are framed by the spoken word of god in english it just says it just says word of god but the original for word is the spoken word the same as in genesis then you start stepping in the frame and then it starts manifesting I'm here getting, I just summed it up for you a little bit. So we talked about Israel, end time events, and great shakings coming. And then we shifted to your destiny, quantum levels of glory, and how to walk in your destiny. We just kind of mix it all up. So I just preach like three sermons in one. And then tonight I'll be back with Charlie Champ at 6 p.m. And I'm going to let you in, in early, but oh, get these books. This is another one, The Courts of Heaven. It's not all on just courts. It's the title of it. One chapter is courts. I wrote it before I even knew who Henderson was. Way back, I was still in the mission field. We had Sir Roth call me one day. He goes, did you copy Henderson stuff? I go, no. Look, look, at the t- look at the year that I told you that happened. He goes, oh, wait, that was before. Exactly. But then, then but you're getting this, but he goes, well, that's a confirmation. Then you saw the same thing in the spirit. I go, exactly. But he, he went further with it. But it has... Quantum glory in this book. One whole chapter on the quantum things I just told you. Has DNA, um, sound and glory. How sound and glory collide together. Sinking with heaven. How to increase your vibrational frequency in the glory. When you fast, you start vibrating on a higher glory. When you forgive, another higher level. When you worship, when you give, it, and, and you get buzzing on such a high level, you break through anything. Like if you have to push a wall, it's hard, but you back up and you got high speed, you can break through the wall. So there's breakthrough. And then there's DNA. How to, how to get new DNA. How to use the blood of Jesus to reset your DNA, your bloodline, and, and reset the, the corruption in your blood, sickness, mental, sin issues. Do you take communion and ask God to it reset your blood code and the defects and the sin defects too? Because the blood has memory. Blood has memory of, of good and bad. And blood, your blood has memory of your forefathers' languages they spoke. And you ask the blood to redeem it, and you start to pick up German or Swedish, wherever you're from. Suddenly, you're picking it really fast because your blood has memory of that. Proof. A guy had a heart transplant, probably from a Chinese donor, a, a guy from the south, probably a hillbilly guy. And all of a sudden, he was speaking, understanding perfect Chinese because the blood had memory. This, I, I'm not going to preach a whole other sermon on that, but there's some interesting stuff out there. How much memory does the blood of Jesus have? The memory of the, his resurrection dwelling in your physical mortal body. So when I take communion, I say, Lord, I, I, I break all the curses off my bloodline. And I don't just break generational curses. A lot of people teach that. I redeem generational blessings after that. Now, Lord, all the wealth that my Jewish side lost and my front European side lost, I, I redeem that wealth. I redeem the knowledge, the wisdom. One of them was into finance. One of them was a scientist in, in Austria, probably knew Einstein during the world war he, he got killed by the nazis and then other, and then the french side has a whole nother so i start claiming that stuff and when i was in france i had french ancestors i started claiming that suddenly boom we're owning a huge property in france with no money no job no salary because i started claiming the inheritance of in my bloodline 
and, and suddenly I start picking up languages, Russian, German, my ancestors live in the place. Strasvidi, kak poživajte, ni mnoga po ruski. Slava Bogu. I start picking up, you know, das ist ein gut, ja, du bist ein guter Junge, German. I just start picking up Quito, says Finnish. I start picking up really fast my brain. When you're young, your brain picks up languages fast. When you're older, it gets set. But he renews your youth like the eagles, even your brain. So suddenly your ability to learn goes, your IQ can go up with the blood being reset. Daniel, he did a Daniel fast for three weeks. So sometimes you have to do some physical mix with the spiritual. And he hit an IQ. He said he was 10 times wiser, smarter, more intelligent than all the others. Didn't study 10 times harder. Supernatural wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge. Not just of the Bible, of natural things. The arts, music, science. How many want to be smarter? Suddenly NASA's calling you to figure things out. Like Bob Jones was, was helping NASA find the meteorite or something. You know, like, I'm a hillbilly, but I think I know when it's coming. It's coming on this day. No, no, we're NASA. We're scientists. We've been doing this for many years. You're a hillbilly. And I mean, he, they just know. Or Bob, Bobby Connor would call the president on Air Force One. How'd you get my number? Well, Lord, just don't want to tell you this word. Changes his, he changes his phone number. And then he calls him again. A new number. Hey, I forgot to tell you. What? How'd you call me back again? What the? This is the on Air Force One, he told me this story. Crazy stuff. And you don't have to be a super, you know, educated, left-wing, woke person, and yet you're a hillbilly from Texas or Alabama, but somehow you got the president's number. <laughs> so there's hope for you. If Bob Jones can do it, and Bobby Connor, he used to, you know, almost kill people, you could do it. Bobby Connor, how many heard his story? He was really a sinner. He told me there's a bunch of people that are half Bobby Connor, half Mexican, running around Mexico. This is before he was saved. I won't go further. That's how I'm saying, thank God he got saved. Amen. <laughs> that, was, that was his visit to Mexico one time. All right. Oh, my God. I think he shared it publicly, didn't he? Did he? Yeah. He, you, you know the story, right? You, you know the story? Okay. I won't go further. It's, he's a funny guy. Anyway, get, get the books. I'll, I'll sign some books at the end for people that want them. Um, what was I going to say? We have a conference in, during Passover, April 14 and 17, if you want to come. We've got Troy Brewer also. We've got Snake Jacobs coming and others in our, in our new building. Um, I was going to say, if you, want to do, if you feel like the three-month school, God's leading you to Arizona, then we're training you three months in all this stuff, hands-on, mentoring. Once in a lifetime, probably the only time I'll do it, but the Lord told me to. I don't want to do it. The Lord told me to do it. I have no desire whatsoever to train people for three months in the same people f- at all. That's like pastoring for three months. But the Lord told me to do it because you need to multiply yourself quickly for what's coming. So that's that. So we'll, there will be information out soon on that. All right, guys. Now my sermon will begin. Open your Bibles. No. No, I'll, I'll let you go. It's 1 o'clock. I want you guys, 1.20, I want you guys to have the time. I could have moved into more stuff, but we'll do it tonight. Amen. Give the, hey, just turn to your neighbor and just tell him, don't worry, you're going to look a lot better in heaven. <laughs> don't tell your wife. No, no. No, no, no. The wife can tell the husband, but not the other way around. Then you're going to have, you're going to need counseling, and you might be sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> I don't care if David Herzog said it. Why did you say that to me, honey? I was insecure. All right. Hey, who said you could leave? Hey, what the heck? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, pastor, can you get up? Can you bail me out? Get me off the stage quickly before I say something crazy. Good to see you, Joel. Love you, man. So good. Come on, let's give David one more big thank you. How about that? Wasn't that great? Bro, that was like a supernatural sampler. Some onion rings, some cheese sticks. Hey, if you want more, get here early. We will have a packed house tonight. Begins at 6, okay? Uh, It'll be a tag team. Charlie Champ, David Herzog, you are loved. Bless you.